Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at the difference quotient. So first, what is the difference quotient? Well, you can almost figure it out based on its name. Difference indicates subtraction, and quotient indicates division. And that's basically what we're looking at, is we're going to subtract things and we're going to divide things. Um, but it, what it is, is it's a ratio that's widely used in calculus. And it basically calculates the slope of a line through two points on a curve, or whatever shape the graph is, given a fixed coordinate x, and then however far we want to stray away from that fixed coordinate x, which we usually use the variable h. So just for comparison's sake, the slope formula you may recall is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the change in y over the change in x. The difference quotient is just a fancy way of rewriting y2 minus y1. So we're going h units from x, and then we're subtracting away f of x, and then in the denominator it would be, well if we look at that it would be x plus h minus x, where the x's would cancel, leaving us just with the variable h. So usually when we see a difference quotient, there's a number plugged in for x, whereas h is always an h. Um, but this is the, the difference quotient. This is what it looks like. This is a very fundamental principle of calculus that we want to be able to know and love and cherish. We do want to be careful when we're subtracting this function because this whole function comes after a subtraction sign. Okay, let's look at some examples. So first we're actually just given a linear equation and we're just going to look at the definition itself. So we're going to say given f of x equals 3x minus 5, we're going to evaluate the difference quotient where we leave x is x and then h will always just be h. What I like to do is I like to break up the numerator because if you put it all in one line, I find that you're much more likely to make a mistake, especially with that subtraction right here. So I'm gonna break it up. I'm gonna first say, okay, let's look at f of x plus h. This just means anywhere in this function that I see an x, I'm replacing it with x plus h. So this would become three times x plus h minus five. And now we're going to just clean this up. So this would become 3x plus 3h minus 5. Okay, so this is part one of the numerator. Part two is just f of x, which is that exactly what was given, 3x minus 5. Now we're going to substitute in this and this for this and this. So we're going to say 3x plus 3h minus 5 minus 3x minus 5, all divided by h. So I'm going to just say here dq. Difference quotient is right here. Now the first expression here does not need to be in parentheses. I just put it for added emphasis. The second one absolutely does need to be in parentheses because remember we're subtracting this entire expression. So we want to make sure when we remove the parentheses that we're distributing the subtraction sign here. This would give us 3x plus 3h minus 5 minus 3x plus 5 divided by h. Now in the numerator, let's clean up the like terms. The 3x and the negative 3x cancel. The negative 5 and the positive 5 cancel. We end up with 3h over h, which is equal to 3. Now previously, so the difference quotient, we end up with 3. Previously I said it's basically like finding the slope of some uh, on a curve between two points. But if you look at our original function, our original function was a linear equation, so it makes sense that the difference quotient here would be 3, because 3 is also the slope of the line that was given. So we like 3. It works out nice. Let's try this again, but this time we're going to actually plug in a number, and because this is linear and we already know what the slope between any two points is, we, we are expecting the answer to be 3. Let's just see if that works. Okay, so again, what we're doing, we're going to break up the numerator. f of 4 plus h. So we're substituting in 4 plus h here, that would be 3 times 4 plus h minus 5, that's going to be 12 plus 3h minus 5, that would be 3h plus 7. Then we're going to do the same thing for f of 4, so anywhere in this function we see an uh, x, we're replacing it with a 4, that would be 3 times 4 minus 5, 12 minus 5, which is 7. Now we're going to take the two expressions from the numerator, 3h plus 7, and subtract them as the difference quotient tells us to do, and divide by h. 
This gives us 3h plus 7 minus 7 divided by h. This gives us 3h over h, which does in fact equal 3, as we expected. Now, the only reason, again, this turned out to be 3 is because the function that I gave was a linear function. And the next few examples, they're not linear functions, so it will be not just equal to the first coefficient you see. In our next example, we're given a quadratic function, and again, we want to find the difference quotient, this time of uh, g of 2 plus h minus g of 2 over h. So what I would do is I'm going to start by just figuring out uh, what this is equivalent to. So g of 2 plus h means anywhere in the function that I see in x, I'm replacing it with 2 plus h. That would be 4 minus 2 plus h minus 2 plus h quantity squared. And when we're simplifying this, we have to be very careful. We've got a lot of things going on. We need to keep order of operations in mind. So in the middle, we can just distribute the subtraction sign, which will give me 4 minus 2 minus h. But over here, remember this subtraction or distributing the subtraction is kind of considered to be multiplication or distributive property. But that does not have priority over the exponent. We need to do the exponent first. So first I'm going to square the binomial, and then I'm going to worry about the subtraction sign, which means I need to leave it in parentheses. When I square this, remember it's the first term squared, the product of the two terms doubled, and then the second term squared. Okay, now that I've done that, now I'm going to distribute that subtraction sign that's going to change the three signs. So that would give us 4 minus 2 minus h minus 4 minus 4h minus h squared. Okay, now we're going to just clean this up. Uh, let's see, we have a negative h squared minus 5h, the 4's cancel, that's nice, minus 2. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's look at g of 2. So g of 2 in this case, we're going to substitute 2 in anywhere we see an x. 4 minus 2 minus 2 squared. That would be 4 minus 2 minus 4, giving us negative 2. So now this is what we're going to substitute in here, and negative 2 is what we're going to substitute in here. That would give us negative h squared minus 5h minus 2 minus negative 2 over h. Cleaning this up, we get negative h squared minus 5h minus 2. The minus negative becomes a plus 2 all over h. Those end up canceling, so we have negative h squared plus, nope, not plus, minus 5h divided by h. All three terms, this one, this one, and this one, all have a factor of h, so we're going to divide out that common factor, giving us a denominator of 1, and we'll be left with negative h minus 5. So all that work, and this is what we end up with for our difference quotient for this quadratic function, negative h minus 5. All right, we're going to take this up a notch. We're going to look at p of x, where p of x equals 3x squared minus 2x. And we're going to evaluate the difference quotient as given here. So we're going to, again, what I like to do is just do each piece individually and then bring them back together. So p of 4 plus h would be 4 plus h cubed minus 2 times 4 plus h. If you know how to do a binomial cube, if you know a shortcut, you can apply the shortcut. If you don't, then what you need to do is you do need to split this up into 4 plus h squared times 4 plus h. You cannot just square the first term and second term. That's not how we do binomial cubes or binomial squares or really anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the exponent and split it up so that we have a square and a 1. And then 4 plus h squared would be 16, first term squared, product of the uh, two terms doubled second term squared. And then we would still need to multiply by 4 plus h, so that's going to give us 64 plus 16h plus 32h plus 8h squared plus 4h squared plus h cubed. And let's not forget there is another piece here, right? I haven't forgotten about this 2 times 4 plus h. We want to keep bringing that down. Maybe I'll multiply it out. That would be minus 8 and minus 2h. So now we have minus 8 and minus 2h. So there's a lot to remember here. We have to be very careful when we do this. We don't want to lose anything. I know dealing with cubes can be a little weird. If you know the shortcut, that's great because that will save you some time and energy. 
But now this is the entirety of the P of 4 plus H. Now we're going to start cleaning it up. So we have a 64 and a minus 8, so that would be 56. Then we have 16H and 32H and minus 2H, that would be 46H. Then we have 8H squared, 4H squared for 12H squared. And lastly we have that H cubed. I don't know why I did these backwards, I guess because the 64 was first. If you want to flip them around so the H cubed comes first, that's fine too. I'm going to leave it like this for now. I'll flip it later. Now I need to do a little bit nicer here will be the P of 4. So P of 4 is going to be 4 cubed minus 2 times 4. That's 64 minus 8, which is 56. Now we're ready to bring the numerator back together. So this is the first part of the numerator we have. And again, I'm going to flip it around. So I'm going to put the H cubed first plus 12 H squared plus 46 H plus 56. So that was the first part minus 56. That's the second part all divided by H. Cleaning this up, it looks like this will cancel with this, leaving us with H cubed plus 12H squared plus 46H divided by H. All three, four, excuse me, all four terms have a factor of H. So when we divide out H from one, two, three, four, we're left with H squared plus 12H plus 46 as our final difference quotient. In our last example, our function is going to be a rational function. We're going to start it out exactly as we've started off every other one. So first we're going to evaluate f of 7 plus h. And that's going to give us 1 over 7 plus h minus 3, which will be 1 over h plus 4. And then for h of 7, we get 1 over 7 minus 3, which is 1 over 4. Now we're going to bring these back to the numerator, and I'm going to do it way up here, where we're going to have 1 over h plus 4 minus 1 over 4 divided by h. And if we're going to simplify this, we don't want to leave it as a complex fraction, so we're going to do what we can to uncomplicate, uncomplex the fraction, um, which means we need a common denominator in the numerator, right? Because if we want to subtract two fractions, we need a common denominator. This is missing a factor of 4. And over here, we're missing a factor of h plus 4. So that would give us 4 minus h plus 4 divided by 4 times h plus 4, all divided by h. That numerator would become 4 minus h minus 4 over 4 h plus 4, all over h. So that numerator just becomes negative h. Okay, now we're going to go back over here. Whee! So we get negative h over 4h plus 4 divided by h. And then we, again, this is still a complex fraction, but at least now we're able to maneuver the complex fraction. So if we rewrote it, it would be negative h over 4 times h plus 4 divided by h over 1. We can rewrite this by multiplying by its reciprocal, which is what I'll do next, times 1 over h. Now we're going to look for common factors. It looks like there's a factor of h here and a factor of h here. So in the end, we end up with negative 1 over 4 times h plus 4, which you can leave it like that, or you could rewrite it with the negative out in front, negative 1 over 4 times h plus 4. So all that for this rational difference quotient, and that's what we end up with. Thank you for stopping.